Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the NHL slate for today, December 27th, after a little Christmas break from hockey. Um, and we're going to go through the same procedure as we've been doing, which has been very successful. We're going to start with, again, kind of an assessment of the team totals, and then we're going to build up to line up. So what that means is we are going to first look at who we think should project well as a team, uh, then we will look at the kind of raw projections as we've kind of, uh, as, as we've created at true DFS and see if we can't build, uh, you know, lineups just by, by gazing at the projections and putting lineups together. You know? Uh, and then after that, we're going to use SaberSim to, you know, to, to use their algorithms and their formulas and their unique lineup building tools to build lineups, given everything that we've already discussed. Now, again, this is on the early side um, and lines can change and things like that. Um, so I do encourage everybody to uh, join us for our live stream at like six at about six o'clock where we'll go over some. We won't go over as much NHL at NBA, but we'll go over enough, enough NHL to uh, give you an idea of what we're doing at least. OK, so again, first, we're going to pull up uh, the, the sites that we usually use for, for team totals and we're not going to use the implied odds from Vegas. We're going to actually use the projected implied team totals from the team totals from kind of daily fantasy sports sites, which I don't know. I go back and forth. Actually, I'm pretty convinced that's, that's the way I want to do it. Just with the, uh, just for the purposes of figuring out who is supposed to look good. Okay. Um, I, I think that seeing kind of a deviation of different sites as projections is also pretty, very healthy. Um, so anyway, Hashtag whatever works. Okay, how about that? Um, okay, so, um, uh, so let's take a look. We'll take a look at, I guess, uh, you know, Saberson first. So you look at, well, that's actually Sunday. So, so the hockey, you have Boston at a 3 7, Carolina at a 3 7, uh, Toronto a little bit below that. And then you have Vancouver actually at 3 9 which is the highest projected total on the slate. So from Sabersim's perspective, you have Vancouver and then a tie between Boston, Calgary, and Carolina. Okay. Now we'll compare that to some of the, uh, some of the others. Um, so Daily Faceoff, which is com a site completely dedicated to hockey. Um, and I'm, you know, I've been absorbing some of their content this season. Um, still not, I'm getting more convinced. I'm not exactly convinced how DFS friendly they are, but uh, they do put up projections. They do put up uh, uh, daily team totals. So you have Caroline at 4.08, which is the highest by a decent amount on their site. So that's interesting. So they have Caroline and then a big drop to Boston and then a whole bunch of three, four. So they actually prioritize Carolina as a team total a little bit more. Then you'll get daily Roto, which is also free. Um, Carolina 3-8, Rangers 3-8, Boston 4, Buffalo up to 4, Pittsburgh 3-8, Toronto 4, Dallas 3-8, Minnesota 3-8, Calgary 4. And they also have Vancouver at 4, LA 4. So Daily Road has got a little bit more spread out. They don't have it as – they certainly don't have it as slanted towards Carolina as, say, um, Daily Faceoff. Um, these guys, Daily Roto, have them only a secondary play. So what I think that we can assume is that there's a whole bunch of teams that could be in play. Now, again, this is just a team total. It doesn't mean that the DFS plays are going to be playable because that all depends on price, right? So what we're going to do now is with that in mind, we're, we're thinking about Carolina, we're thinking about, um, about uh, uh, who is it, uh, Vegas, was it? Who's the other one that was on all the lists? uh vancouver sorry uh so we're thinking about these types of teams and the others that we brought up and then we're going to see how that applies to projections we have so we're going to pull up uh true dfs's premium sub premium subscriber only uh sheets and again i'm not going to do this all the time but every you know sometimes i am going to put this up there and again if you want access to this on a daily basis you'll subscribe to truedfs.com you'll become a premium member and uh i think you get something for you sign up now, you get maybe the first month free. I, I honestly don't even know because I'm the worst when it comes to that. But promise you there's a deal. Make sure you get in there and 
see what else we have to offer among hockey and all the other sports. All right, commercial over. So we pull up the sheets and they are listed again. We're ranked by sheets value score, um, which is a good combination of points per dollar and raw points. And we do this again with hockey. I just want to be able to gaze at the sheet. Okay. Just want to be able to gaze at the sheet and see if I can't find a cluster of teams that are on this top panel or preferably near the top that are all from the same team. Okay. Uh, Cause that's what hockey is. You want to get guys on the same uh, on the ice at the same time to correlate the assists and the goals and all that stuff. And then if we're really greedy, we'll make sure they're also on the same even strength line and or power play line. Okay. Um, all right. So let's take a look. First thing you'll notice is that there's no real one big standout value score guy, which means is that which means that it's uh, there's no kind of like one off that you could just slot into all your lineups or at least a good amount of them. So you do probably want to make uh, more pure stacks, you know, instead of doing like a, you know, I don't know, four, two and then a bunch of one offs or a five zero and a bunch of one offs. Those are the one-offs are just a little harder to come by. So you're going to want to, in my opinion, um, just be more stack heavy, like five twos, you know, even six zeros, right? So that's the first thing. Second thing before we even get into it is, as usual, we want to try to start with the goalie that's cheap, that projects well. Once again, Sorokin looks pretty good, 7,400. Um and even the top-rated goalie, uh, Igor, is 80, 7,800. So one of the, one of those guys are going to be the guys we probably just kind of slot in, at least for openers. So let's just take a look. Let's get greedy. First-rated first, first rated guys from Vancouver. Do I see any of it, though? Yeah, I guess. I might see a JT Miller over here. But do I see anybody else? No. I mean, only two guys from Vancouver in the top panel. So maybe that's not the best idea. Maybe they could fill in the 5-2, though, right? We do a 5-2 stack. You have – two guys that are pretty cheap that are from the first power play line in JT Miller and, and Bress and, and, and Brock. So we'll have to keep that in the back of our heads. We see what else there is. Um, Carolina. Uh, you know, I, I'm just gazing at it. I don't really see it. You know, I see Andre Svechnikov ranked number two and Tervanian ranked number 11, but then there's a break all the way down to the next guy. I can't even find him down to Brett Burns. So this isn't so easy to play the Carolina stack either. Now you look at Toronto. I really don't see too much. I see, I see Matthews at the top, but that's pretty much it. Then I see Ranton in not a lot of Colorado's. The Islander one, I really don't see too much either. I have Aunt Bouvier and boy, oh boy. And then there's the goalie. And now we're back to Vancouver. So it looks as though this Vancouver, even though it's only the top two, is the best of the given alternatives. And it also goes to show that that it's probably going to be a slate where you're going to really benefit from using Sabersen to build these lineups for you because they don't really build themselves all too easily. So you see random guys from like different teams, you know, um, there's the one Winnipeg guy, uh, here's the one Nashville guy, or whatever it is. So the best I'm going to be able to do is probably force in the Vancouver guys. Um, so, you know what, just for the hell of it, let's do that and see what it looks like. Um, remember, we were talking about Brock Boser and also the, um, and JT Miller as part of a power play stat. So let's start with that. Um, we'll pull up uh, Vancouver. We have a cancel game. Postponed for some reason. I don't know. I guess it's for cold. Hope it's not for COVID. So Vancouver, you have JT Miller and Brock Oser, I believe. So let's see who else is on the power play. Because um, it's remember we're, we're one one, and Boser, sorry, JT Miller is two one. So let's find all the other guys on the Vancouver power play. We'll sort Z to Y, and Vancouver. So we have Horvat and then Hughes and Patterson and then Lazar. Okay. So we'll fill all that in. We'll go Horvat, 
Um, well, here's Lazar, we'll put him in for now. Um, which one was Patterson? Patterson. And defense was who? Defense was the Hughes. So I think these are all the guys on the power play. Let me just make sure that I'm not missing anything. Uh, there shouldn't be another one. Uh, and Curtis Lazar, if you want to get all six guys. Let's see, all five guys. I should have all five of these, all six of these guys listed as the power play. This is weird. You can't have six. I mean, I guess you could, but it'd be kind of silly. So here I would have Lazar the one, Patterson, Hughes, Okay, Boser, Miller, and Horvath. Ooh, I have to look into more of this. So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll prioritize the guys that are not like the third line. Like we'll prioritize, maybe we'll throw out Patterson or something like that. But you know what we could do? We just leave them all in. <laughs> Let's just, why don't we just leave them all like for now and see what that does? Remember, we're putting in a goal. We're putting in, say, I don't know, uh, Shesterkin, whatever. And then you have 4,800 man for these remaining guys. So you'd have to double check to make sure that you're getting the right power play line. Um, Cause I, I, for whatever reason, have six guys listed. Um, and I know you can't have six skaters on the, on the ice at the same time. Um, so I guess this is the thing that I would probably try to do is to play. If I was building by hand, it's just, just jamming all these Vancouver dudes. Um, make sure they project kind of okay. So that's what we could do actually to prioritize. Let's go back and we'll see. Which of these Vancouver guys like really look horrible? So these guys are in the twenties as far as this goes. So Lazar is is the one is the weak one. He has he has the worst value score of all those guys. Um, so that's the one that we could probably get rid of. Who's it? Lazar. So we can play like a five two with uh, these five. What's Patterson? Is Patterson a center? He's a center. Horvat is listed as a center, and Miller is also listed as a center. So we would need two from one team and, and a defenseman to make this work. But I think I think this is a perfectly reasonable way to start, and probably the way that I would build my my handle lineups. Now let's take a look and see if maybe Saberson can't help us out with this. So let's uh, put our projections in to Saberson, um, which is a really, really good, uh, call it optimizer, call it a smart randomizer. It's a, it's a good lineup builder. It takes into account, uh, I'll show you what I mean. It takes into account correlation. So if I want to know, for example, like Alex Ovechkin, if I click on him, it will not only give you his distribution or results, but it'll give you a correlation number of who he, he correlates well with. You'll see like the best guys to play with Ovechkin are Strom, uh, Kuch, uh, Kuchinov, Kuznetsov, uh, and Gustafsson, right? And also Shiri, like all these guys positively correlate. And that's what they factor in when they build lineups, which is really important. So let's build 150. Oh, let's build 50. So we'll build 50 lineups. We'll build it, but we'll build 150 max. As a matter of fact, let's build 150. And see what they give us. And I am honestly have no idea what what Saberson is going to spit out here. I just, I don't believe it's going to be like a whole bunch of what I, what I'm doing, but I don't know. They start with the, with two good values, but once again, those, those two top guys were not that much better than anybody else. So I'm going to predict that these lineups are teams that we haven't even talked about. Let's see. Nope. Not true. Look at all of this, all the Vancouver, as I, as I suspected, ah, that's crazy. Um, bunch of Calgary. Ooh, Calgary is very, very well owned here against Edmonton. So let's take a look. Team stacks, Calgary and Vancouver would be the two top uh, stacks if you built 150. Um, excuse me, if you built, uh, yeah, 150 using our projections. So again, between the Saberson builds and, and, and the hand builds, you could really, I think that you could really build some good high upside lineups using these tools and Give yourself a good sweat, you know. Are you going to be completely expert? Probably not, but definitely get you, I think, plus EV. And again, it gives you something cool to sweat. Uh, 
and uh, maybe get uh, get something big done. Anyway, uh, that'll do it. Uh, again, show up at, at six o'clock. We're going to go over some live stuff where we go over more lineup builds and more late breaking news and things like that. That'll do it. Good luck. <laughs>